Hello there, my crafty friends. It's Ashley Pfeiffer, the maker behind Stamped AF. This week, I'm doing a very cute, very quick project. It holds some um, two-bite chocolate chip banana bread muffins. And uh, I'm starting keto, so I can't have them. So I think I might wrap them all up because they're only good for like a day. So I actually got them last week and I'm just getting to this now. So I think I might freeze them. But anyways, this is a super cute, super fast treat holder. If you need something for back to school or just a little thank you gift, this takes no time at all. So we need a sheet. I've got basic white cardstock here, basic white thick. We are going to start, it is five inches by six and a half inches. So we're going to start at the half inch mark and then we're going to go down. I, of course, wrote my measurements down and then moved them. Half inch. Okay, so we're six, five, three, and two. Now, it's funny because that's the way I did it the first time. And of course, when I go to write it down, I go six, five, three, two, half. Like, because normally we want to write in the smallest to largest, right? But when you're scoring, you're going the other way. <laughs> so you are scoring it at six, six inches, five inches, three inches, two inches, and a half an inch. Uh, is that right? I don't even know if we need that one. One, two, three, four. We only have four. So it's two, three, five, and six. That's right. This could not be easier. And if you want to do even less stamping, you could use a yellow cardstock so that you don't have to do any coloring. Add a little bit more light here. Uh, but I decided I didn't want to use Daffodil Delight or any of the yellows. I wanted to do a little bit of coloring. So for this project, we need the Bunches of Fun stamp set. And all we are using is the bananas and thanks a bunch. There's some cute things in here. The older you get, the better you get, unless you're a banana. Uh, I really like this. Hope you feel special. I usually just send a text. So cute, right? So... I am using Memento Tuxedo Black ink. I thought about using a nice brown, but I've already got my black twine here, so I'm just gonna stick with what I have. And from the scrap of basic white that I have, I'm going to stamp two more bunches of bananas. I almost said balloons. Ay ay ay. You want to rotate these every time you stamp because you don't want them being identical. Maybe you do, I don't. And I'm going to do a little bit more than I did the first time because I found that, especially on the top, there are some areas that are a little sparse. And I added a little bit of ink splatter, but it still isn't enough to fill that gap. Now look, those are exactly the same, which is why I'm saying we want to turn it, spin it, pay attention to what you've done. You can always turn it upside down and chances are you didn't do that already. Now we are going to have a little tag on here, so it may not be so obvious if they are repetitive. Who else sees like uh, a big slip and fall with this many banana peels? Reminds me of like Looney Tunes or something. Okay, I'm gonna do a couple off of the edge always recommended you do that when you've got a repeating pattern because it wouldn't just stop at the edge right okay I'm gonna do one more over here and I think we may be good to go now before I put the stamp away and clean it I do have a scrap and this is basic white thick but no biggie I colored it I fussy cut it popped it up and I have two of my leftover circles from the picture this dies which gives you a whole bunch of stitch circles in a frame when you use the full die but you're left with all these negatives and it's perfect for something like this because we don't have stitch circles anymore 
So for this part, I am just going to speed through this because it's nothing fancy. I just have Daffodil Delight blend. So I'm going to go on the lines of each one and then come in with the light. So I will be back in a moment. Oh, I'm on fumes of this. <laughs> okay, so you can use Stampin' Blends to do some ink splatter. I don't know how much I'm gonna get out of this because it's like dry. So let's see if I can get anything out of my dark one. Maybe a little bit. It's probably really hard to see. And I feel like it's not quite as necessary on this card because there are a lot more bananas. Now, this tip is not ruined from that. It was ruined long before. <laughs> but if you don't want to use your blends, you can use your Stampin' Right marker, which is what most of us use, right? Whoa, that's a juicy one. <laughs> this is not a marker that I reach for very often. Truth be told, Daffodil Delight isn't a color I have reach for very often. Okay, so that should be plenty of splatter. Now we are going to take a piece of tear and tape and just run it along the half inch piece, the panel that's a half an inch wide. And we are just going to press that down and it will be absolutely square. If you have anything that's hanging off, you can just take your scissors and snip that off. We are going to keep this as the bottom so we can put our little treat in there. I've never seen banana once. I was desperately seeking something that had bananas just so that I could use this stamp set because I hadn't until today. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and fussy cut these very quickly, nothing fancy. I will leave just a tiny little border on it. On my first one, I actually colored this using my Stampin' Blends, but I really don't think we're gonna get very far. I will try it. I'm gonna use my very mangled end of my Dark Daffodil Delight. If you'd prefer, you can die cut it from some Daffodil Delight cardstock, but I am using scraps that I still have. Now I've left this sit for a couple minutes, so it might be good to go don't need to color the whole circle but you do need to color enough so that when it's popped up no one can tell that it's not colored all the way and if you want to soften that blend you can keep going over it the work I do to be lazy right <laughs> so now I'm going to put some dimensionals on the back just pop it up a little bit thought about doing a different color for the circle this time, but it really works. And then before you place it down, you just want to kind of audition and see where it's going to go. Because I have a gap there, I'm going to put it there. I found it was a challenge on this one because I had such a big gap here to not cover it. And you can see I did some old bananas on that one. I don't love it so I didn't do it this time. <laughs> I am going to just glue that one on, although you could put it on dimensionals because I mean, chances are you are going to hand deliver this, right? But I'm going to pop up the bananas next. 
So what we're going to do is just put one of them down and I'm actually going to use a full size dimensional up here. And then we could probably use a mini, let's cut one in half. Let's cut two in half. Let's cut three in half. <laughs> And we'll put one on each end just so they don't dip. Okay, so we'll pop that on there. And now we're just gonna put these ones resting on top. Now, on my first one, I actually cut the last one and put it over there, but it was a lot of work for very little return. So I think we're just going to keep it simple this time and we'll lift it a little bit higher. You can play with it to see how you like it. That looks kind of cute, but I probably would have had to put the whole thing a little bit further over. Now I'm just gonna put some glue on random little bits and hope that some of it catches the bananas underneath. That should be good. And now we'll take some of the black essential twine. And if you haven't seen this in the catalog, it's quite easy to miss actually. It's the Baker's Twine Essential Pack and it has basic black, it has crumb cake, uh, whisper white or basic white. I don't know what we're calling it anymore. Very vanilla and gray granite. And I have gone through the black and white like nobody's business. Okay, so I'm going to wrap it around a couple of times and we'll grab a little piece of Daffodil Delight cardstock, stamp our sentiment. Oh, the light decided it's done. Well, alrighty then. Now, before I tie this, I want to put my banner in because I may very well be covering part of it. So if your bow isn't at the front, you can just readjust everything. Four wraps might have been a little ambitious. I think all I'm gonna get is a knot unless I take, we're gonna unwrap one. I only did three on the first one. You know what? We're just going to go for it. If it ends up in the wrong spot, we'll just adjust. Has this ever happened to you? You get one tiny little piece and then the other one is like ridiculously long. So I like to use my reverse tweezers because they are a lot thinner than my big fat fingers. <laughs> okay, like that. Trim that off. And you'd probably notice I'm putting all my beverage on my grid sheet. That's just because I'm going to scoop up the whole thing when I'm done and throw it all out at one time. So I have a piece of Daffodil Delight cardstock. I'm just going to trim that down to, this one is three quarters of an inch, I wanna say. I don't think we need it to be that wide. Yes, it's just under three quarters. So I'm gonna do one at half and one at three quarters. Because I have a feeling that the half inch is going to be very snug. So when you are using a banner pick-a-punch or a pick-a-punch in general, you need to cut it either half inch, three quarters of an inch or one inch. And when you do that, you need to back it up like a millimeter or so just so that it fits properly. But before we do that, let's stamp on both of these and see which one we like. I'd love to get your opinion, but I can't. Not until it's too late. Look, that one a little low, but I think I like the half inch, which is what I thought. Okay, so I'm just gonna put it in there. That 
looks good. Might be a little long. Let's take one more off. And then now I'm just going to cut that, put some glue. You could pop it up if you'd prefer, but I, because the dimensionals are kind of like one, two, three, four, it will tuck in there just nice. I don't know if that's a, is that a phrase? Just nice. <laughs> it is now. And you could certainly put some kind of embellishment on there, but how cute is that? I really like the one where we've got way more banana peels. So don't be too conservative with your bananas because what a difference it makes. And if you make this, I would love to see it. You can share it on my Facebook group, my Facebook page. Both are stamped AF. Uh, tag me on Instagram. You can email it to me at stampedaf at gmail.com. I would love to see it. So I thank you so much for watching. If you need the supplies to make this or any other project using Stampin' Up! product and you live in Canada and you are not yet working with a demonstrator, I would love to earn your business. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you soon, my crafty friends. Bye.